Hey there, welcome to Neuropod, a channel about all things related to the company Neuralink. Here are 10 simple things you need to know about this Elon Musk founded company. Number one, they've already enabled a monkey to play a video game with no hands. Back in April 2021, the Neuralink team performed surgery on a monkey named Pager to implant two Neuralinks on both sides of its motor cortex. They had Pager use a joystick to move the paddles in a video game called Pong. Then they used these link implants that have tiny little electrode probes to measure the electrical activity inside the brain. So the more than 2,000 electrodes were detecting the action potentials, or the electric voltage spikes, from the neuron activity whenever Pager moved the joystick. The Neuralink team then unplugged the joystick and were able to just decode the intended hand movements of Pager. So instead of Pager actually controlling the joystick, Neuralink was just reading the electrical information in the brain to determine what Pager intends to do and translates that to movement of the paddles. And although this type of thing has been done before, it's never been done to this degree with this many electrodes. And Neuralink is also aspiring to make this a more scalable and safer solution than anything that's ever been done. Plus they wanna make it a product that people can buy that will last longer. This is important because it could be very useful for paralyzed patients. Take a look at this clip. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused, and he's playing entirely of his own volition. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. Number two. Neuralink is working on solving many brain problems. Now this is what's most inspiring to me, and I don't claim to be an expert, but I've learned a simple way of understanding the brain is that it's just a bunch of electrochemical activity. Everything we think, feel, sense, and move is enabled by this blob in our skull. Therefore, problems are caused by uncontrolled misfiring of neurons and almost everyone will have neurological problems over time. So Neuralink wants to create a generalized brain device that is both reliable and affordable. They wanna solve problems like memory loss, hearing loss, blindness, and paralysis. They're also working on solving things like depression, insomnia, extreme pain, tinnitus, seizures, anxiety, addiction, strokes, and brain damage. Now, just because I've listed a wide variety of these neurological issues doesn't mean I'm dismissing the severity of each of them. The depth of positive impact that Neuralink can have on any individual and their family and their friends is greater than any company I can think of. I'm just not quite sure why Neuralink doesn't get as much attention as some of these other companies. Number three, Neuralink's long-term mission is to reduce the likelihood of bad AI outcomes. Elon has long shared his concerns about AI and the dangers associated with having general intelligence that is far superior to humans in every way. Here's a clip from 2014. I, I don't think most people understand just how quickly machine intelligence is advancing. It's much faster than almost anyone realizes, even within Silicon Valley, and certainly outside Silicon Valley, people really have no idea. If, if, there's, if there's a super intelligent, particularly if it's engaged in recursive self-improvement, if there's some digital super, super intelligence um, and its optimization or utility function um, is something that's detrimental to humanity, then it will have a very bad effect. Elon is among numerous others who are concerned about the dangers of AI. Stephen Hawking, for example, believes that AI could spell the end of the human race. In January 2016, this might be the first time that Elon publicly mentions brain interfaces. Do you have other ideas that you have no time for? Um, 
Well, I mean, I do think it's possible to, to create something very exciting in electric aircraft. Uh -huh. um, and um, I think there's probably going to be a lot that happens in uh, genetics and in a human-machine brain interface, like essentially a cyborg brain interface. Mm -hmm. About five months later, Elon specifically mentions the idea of a neural lace that would serve as a third complementary brain layer to our limbic system and our cortex. This concept could prevent digital intelligence from competing with our biological intelligence and instead merge them together. I think one of the solutions, the solution that, that seems maybe the best one, is to have an AI layer. Um, if you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then um, a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex, um, that um, could work, work well and symbiotically with, with you. I mean, just as your cortex works symbiotically with your limbic system, your sort of a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest. This Yuan has also written about this on his Twitter, simply stating that the Neuralink mission statement is, if you can't beat them, join them. Here, he's referring to the threat of an agent or system that can engage in recursive self-improvement. If that AI system has any interest that conflicts with our human interests, humanity may experience some trouble. One of the analogies he likes to share is about anthills. For example, if humans want to build a road and there's an anthill in the middle of the way, they'll run over the anthill without thinking much of it at all. And similarly, if an AI system has some goal in mind, but humans are in the way, it may not hate us, but it might want to get rid of us just because we're a nuisance. Just, just like in the anthill example, we don't necessarily hate the ants, we just have our own objective. Number four, Neuralink's current main product is a brain-computer interface. You probably already knew this, so I won't spend too much time on it, but Neuralink's device consists of neural threads, a link, and a charger. Each small and flexible thread contains many electrodes for detecting neural signals. For the link, it's a sealed, implanted device that processes, stimulates, and transmits neural signals. And the charger is a compact inductive charger that wirelessly connects to the implant to charge the battery from the outside. Number five, Neuralink developed their own surgical robot to perform implant surgery. At the update event in August 2020, Elon shared that the team is aspiring to have the robot perform the entire surgery. Here's what he said. And we actually ultimately want this robot to do uh, essentially the entire surgery. Uh, so in, in everything from, from in, incision, uh, removing the, the skull, inserting the electrodes, placing the device, um, and then um, closing things up and having you ready to, to leave. So we want to have a fully automated system. Similar to the way that LASIK would not be as scalable of an eye surgery without a highly advanced machine, Neuralink wants to scale up this procedure to millions of patients. If neurosurgeons had to take the time and perform every surgery manually, the supply of neurosurgeons would not nearly be enough. Additionally, being able to insert the electrode threads would not be possible without the robot anyway. As stated on the Neuralink website, the threads are smaller than a human hair and cannot be grasped, manipulated, and accurately inserted by a human surgeon. Doing this requires micron precision for the grasp, tens of microns of precision for localizing and tracking the moving brain during insertion, and high speed in order to get hundreds of threads in quickly. Neuralink's robot performs specialized tasks specifically designed for Neuralink. There are plenty of examples that I could use here, but one that happens to be top of mind is what happened at Tesla and NVIDIA. For quite some time, Tesla was using NVIDIA chips to support driver assistance technology. Several years ago, Tesla decided to create their own custom chips from scratch. This obviously takes significantly more effort and engineering resources, but over the long run, the entire design of the chip is way more efficient. Simply put, it's optimized in every way for Tesla's specific use case. So to bridge the metaphor, Neuralink is doing the same thing. They're working on developing a highly customized robot that's optimized for their needs. 
eventually the team's going to be great at creating robots and I could see them expanding to make other types of highly specialized medical robots for a variety of use cases. Yeah, I guess we've started with just implementing, you know, robot manipulating the threads. Um, but we definitely need to expand to essentially doing the entire surgery with a robot. Um, so there's nothing like really, uh, as far as I can tell, fundamentally like stopping us from doing that, um, sort of like at a fundamental science level. Um, it hasn't been done in the past, I think, probably just because uh, like volumes of surgeries hasn't been needed. Um, but specifically for us to scale up to you know many hundreds of thousands or millions of patients, um, we will need to automate like the entire surgery essentially. Number six. Neuralink is developing custom chips, implants, and electrodes. Like Tesla, Neuralink is a vertically integrated company. Listen to this statement from one of Neuralink's original co-founders, Paul. I, I can talk a little bit about the digital architecture. It's uh, fully custom. Uh, one of the most difficult challenges, I think, of, of building an implant is the energy density. So um, the more electrodes you record from, the more energy you're going to be consuming. And so there's just, there was nothing commercial out there. So there's an analog front end that's able to amplify these really small signals like microvolt range so that we can actually digitize them and then take those signals and then find exactly what we're looking for. And there was nothing out there that could basically do those two things. And so that's why we had to build a full custom ASIC. Um, and so there's really, um, yeah, there's nothing out, you know, like it out there. It's, um, um, designed specifically to record signals from the brain and um, anything else is, is, would just be wasting energy. The benefits of being vertically integrated run pretty deep, but the key points to note are that Neuralink can control their own destiny and adapt to changes very quickly. For example, Neuralink has reiterated on their design and architecture numerous times. Neuralink can also optimize everything for their specific needs. The size of the chips, design of the electrodes, and integration with the robot can all be controlled in-house. The key elements for vertical integration are that they're fortunate enough to have the resources to fund many projects, and they have access to hiring extremely talented engineers and other staff. And these advantages likely won't change in the future. Number seven, the Neuralink implant will charge wirelessly with a hat. Take a look at this picture of a couple Neuralink beanies. There's a wide variety of headwear types that people might want. Back in August 2020, Elon said this on Twitter. A nightcap would probably work best. Then in April 2021, Elon said, comes with wireless charging baseball cap. Regardless of the choice that somebody might want, one thing that stayed consistent is on the Neuralink website, they say, a compact inductive charger wirelessly connects to the implant to charge the battery from the outside. Number eight, the cost of the procedure will eventually get close to LASIK eye surgery. Any estimate of how much it will cost at launch and what price it will reduce to over time? Well, I, I think at, at launch, it's probably gonna be, it, it, I, I would say that's not really representative because um, at first I think it's, it's gonna be you know, quite expensive but that price will very rapidly drop. Um, and I think over time, we wanna get the, the cost um, obviously down as low as possible. Um, but I think um, I inclusive of the automated surgery, I think we wanna get the, 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 the price down to a few thousand dollars, something like that. Um, and I, I think that's possible. I think it should be possible to get it similar to um, LASIK and, and then the uh, device electronics itself, um, I think, will will not be very expensive um, because it actually does does use a lot of the parts that are made in extremely high volume in tens of millions of, of units uh, for uh, smartphones and, and smartwatches and wearables in general. Since Elon referenced the cost of LASIK eye surgery, I decided to look into some pricing stats. For those who don't know, LASIK is a surgery often performed with a robot and a laser. There's lots of variation. But when I take an average of the prices I've seen, LASIK hovers around a cost of $2,000 to $3,000 for both eyes. I couldn't find a good breakdown of those costs, so here's a breakdown of a very similar procedure called PRK. It's a slightly more expensive procedure, but it's cool to see how some of the specific costs would get broken up. 
My guess is the similar percentages of the overall cost would be the same for LASIK. The cost of a surgeon's labor hovers around a quarter of the cost, then the remainder gets split between the equipment and the follow-up appointments after the procedure. Keep in mind, LASIK is considered an elective surgery and not an essential procedure. Because of that, it's rare that insurance in the United States would cover the entire cost. The whole health insurance system in the US probably isn't the best, but it's also not as terrible as those overseas might think it is. So regardless, the cost ends up being around a few thousand dollars for most people. Number nine, Neuralink is a young and small company. Neuralink continues to look to hire the best talent. They have plenty of roles available in almost every department, both in Fremont, California, and where Tesla's largest factory is being built, Austin, Texas. Whether you're interested in robotics, material science, chip design, or software programming, or a non-engineering role like finance or human resources, you just have to be passionate about what Neuralink is doing. You don't necessarily have to have experience with brains. Elon consistently reiterates this. I, know, we, we, I think we also especially need people who have worked on, on product, worked on and shipped products. So if you've like shipped a smartwatch or a phone uh, or you know, any kind of complex electronics or complex device um, or advanced medical devices, uh, we'd love for you to contact us and consider working here. So, um, and, and a very important point to emphasize is that you do not need to have prior experience on brains. So a lot of people think, well, I couldn't possibly work Neuralink because I don't know anything about how brains work. And that's okay, you can learn, um, but we need software engineering, we need mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, like I said, chip design, robotics, um, and uh, all the things that a company needs uh, to work. The team is still quite small, but growing. Here's a chart of the employee growth according to LinkedIn. Number 10, Neuralink will completely change how humans live. Bandwidth, the amount of information being sent and received between a computer and our brains is currently very little. It's like a straw is the passageway for information to be sent and received. Our ability to send information to a computer is extremely limited. It's limited by either our voice or our two little thumbs typing on our screen. And so imagine if you have to Google search something you're using your two fingers and that input is extremely slow. By contrast, when we're receiving the information from a computer, we're getting it in the form of audio and visual information. Fortunately, our eyes and ears can take in quite a bit of information. With a Neuralink, however, that information appears like it's nothing. We would convert that straw to a superhighway. With a Neuralink, we'd be able to think of something and have it return the Google search results with practically zero delay. And our human sensitivity to that bandwidth is incredibly sensitive. That is that a small increase in bandwidth can have a huge impact on how we live. Think about this all in the context of the three main industries that propel consumer technology advancements further. Defense, adult films, and video gaming. Our channel is all about Neuralink and related topics. We share updates and news about the company and I encourage you to subscribe to stay up to date with this fascinating company. Thanks for watching. The video linked here is the one that YouTube believes is best specifically for you. Check it out.